Welcome back to our channel, Warriors. We are still growing. If you haven't had that, Abuelita makes those bomb-ass tamales for Christmas. Make sure she smashes that subscribe button right now. First and foremost, let me give a shout-out to the newest patrons and the following patrons. Nathan, Scott, Mika Boy, Ramon, Lead With Love, Johnny, Charles, Elbert 12, Soul Star LA, Coach Ken, Miguel L, AI Vega, Esquiel, Miguel, Lead Our Actions Under the Christ, Big Bad 48, JT, Nova, Jack, Michigan Wolverines, Marius, Chevelle 66, Gigi, Abuelita's Journey, and Dallas Herrero. If you have not already signed up for that Patreon, make sure you hit that link in the description below. You are definitely missing out. This episode right here, man, it's Saturday, and it's also Six months, six months since I've walked away from the California Department of Corrections after 16 years as a lieutenant. That's the rank that I rose to in those 16 years, period. This is a six-month recap, man. So what's it like now, Hector? I'm going to tell you guys. First and foremost, I want to thank everybody that has supported me, this channel, the mission, the goal, and the message. It is humbling, overwhelming, and powerful. Because you guys were there to catch me when I fell. Right? I jumped. Whew. A leap of faith. And in reality, I did a leap of faith. What I did was walked away from everything I knew in life. My means of financial stability for my family and for my four-year-old daughter. Man, you guys know she means the world to me. She is my world. <laughs> She's everything to me. But the position that I was in at work... At Richard J. Donovan Correctional Facility, RJD, was an extremely toxic environment. Extremely toxic. And something I realized right before I shot this video, man, because I'm growing. As an individual, as a man, as a person, as a warrior, I'm still growing. I'm only 38 years old. Right? Yeah, I have a lot of life experiences. I do. But my, my life isn't over, right? And neither is your guys's. Basically, I'm just your guys' mouthpiece, right? What I share is I share a lot of other people's story. Everybody has their own story. Something I came to realize and people ask me in numerous interviews, and this is what it's taken, right? Nothing in my life I regret, nothing I wouldn't change anything as awful as some, as horrible, as awful as some experiences were. I wouldn't change anything because this has led me up until this point right here. Making a video like this, making videos daily and speaking to the masses, speaking to the following warriors. I always got asked in interviews. What? It was along the lines of seeing combat in Iraq and having PTSD and and working for the California Department of Corrections, which is the most violent prison system in the United States, right? It is. Because of the politics, because of the way they get down, because the um, consistency of the violence... It's ongoing violence. It's daily violence. It's not even daily violence because it's hourly violence. Right? You could have incidents in the morning. You do have incidents in the morning shift. You have incidents in the evening shift. You have incidents in the night shift when you wake up and you do a cell you you do your security check and there's a dead inmate in there and his cellmate is right there covered in blood. Right? He murdered that that man. Daily daily my answer then was 
To tell you the truth, guys, I didn't know where my PTSD from the military stopped and my PTSD from CDCR started. I'm going to be honest with you guys, right? And I didn't even, wasn't even taking my own lessons. My PTSD for the California Department of Corrections started on day one. It started on day one. Because I got exposed to a whole nother world. A whole nother world, right? And I speak for green, I speak for blue, I speak for the masses. And I I, I also violated another one of my beliefs or sayings is, is I used to, I tell you guys, hey man, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, doesn't mean that you have to go to combat. I tell you guys this, and I mean that. Well, post-traumatic stress disorder, and this is something I just learned, doesn't even involve violence, right? You you didn't have to have experienced violence to be diagnosed with PTSD or to have PTSD, undiagnosed, and need to seek the treatment, right? It's a process. Traumatic event, trauma, trauma. You know what's fucking trauma? Uh, being a brand new officer, looking around and realizing, holy shit, I'm not in Kansas anymore. Right, hearing the alarm, get down, get down. Bah! Right, that the whole you hadn't even you haven't even seen the blood yet. The whole and the sounds. Man, I was at Sesame Place yesterday here in San Diego with my four year old daughter and the wave machine. It went, uh, I, I kid you not, man, I, it was kind of embarrassing. I was with the family friend. She can verify. She can vouch. She she took her little daughter. I, I took my daughter. That We just happened to be there at the same time, which is cool because our daughters are little friends. <laughs> Boy, are they friends. But I, I jumped out of the chair. I even said, oh, shit. I'm not joking. I'm not putting a 10 on this. It, it dropped my heart big time. And I got embarrassed afterwards. The same exact feelings that I used to get when I got back from Iraq. And I would hear a loud sound, an explosion, or a a fireworks, or a car backfire. or I would flinch. Right? And I I forgot about that. I forgot that I used to flinch like that when I came back from Iraq. I I still do. I see a cardboard box on the side of the road. I think it's an IED. Initially, boom, IED. I see a mound of dirt on the side of the road as I'm driving. Here in the United States, I think IED, improvised roadside bomb. I see a parked car on the side of the road. It, it, it does, my body and my mind does what it does, right? Because of my traumatic experiences. I, when I see a car on the side of the road, I think car bomb. And yesterday, and I, I knew that there was loud sounds that, that, that resembled a prison alarm, right? The car wash. Uh, Costco has a fucking stupid sound that shouldn't be having, right? But that's trauma. That is all trauma. Being in a toxic, toxic, okay? I talked about violence. I talked about being a new, in, okay? So now, now it's new, right? Now I'm a CEO in day one. I see... Uh, I hear alarms, right? I see blood. Now, what about toxicity, trauma? Trauma to me, right? I I do go back and watch all my videos, right? I talk about infidelity in the department. Well, infidelity is traumatic to every party involved, including the children, people that get torn apart, families that get torn apart, right? And I'm not a saint. (laughs) I'm not exempt from that. That's traumatic. That is trauma, right? We we laugh it off, we joke it off, and and, and we and I, I, as I'm fucking talking, I'm everything is coming picture clear now, like crystal clear. Think about people that work in, um, where you have to have, or you don't have to have. They use sadistic or like uh, what are they? Uh, dark, dark sense of humor to mask. We're doing that in Iraq too, and I know, I know the inmates would do it. Everybody does this, or everywhere I've been involved, where it's fucking on and cracking. 
we, we you use humor to try to hover, cover up the pain. Infidelity. We joke. Ah, oh, got another one. Got another one. Got another one. But is that really cool, right? To anybody but fucking involved. Dead inmates, right? I told you guys when 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 the alarm would go off, my friends would call. Ah, oh, you're gonna have to work late overtime. You're not gonna get to go home now. That's a deceased individual, right? What about all the backstabbing amongst green, amongst peers, amongst managers, amongst administrators? It is fucking disgusting, right? To me, that in itself was traumatic, traumatic, toxic, because I wasn't raised like that. Here was your boy coming from a loyal Loyal military platoon where we had proven we were not only willing to die for each other, looking forward to dying for our friend so that they didn't have to. Greater love has no man than a man laid down for his brother, right? John 15, 13. My favorite verse can I even say favorite verse (laughs) only dead men have seen the end of war Plato the backstabbing you know I, I joke about Fuck, I don't even joke because it highly upset me. It highly upset me. I don't joke about... Like, maybe I do joke, but like... The time I let m- my friend, who I thought was my friend, acquaintance, borrow the Captain Bars because he became acting. And he turned around and wrote me up as he, when he was my, my manager. The way I'm built, do you realize what went through my mind? Do you realize what I wanted to do to that guy? Right? It wasn't pretty, right? I legitimately felt um, <clears throat> whatever that word is, I felt betrayed, betrayed, right? I did a whole fucking video on violence. I told you how good I am at violence, right? And I'm not bragging. I'm not boasting. That's nothing to say to be great at violence, right? It's better to be great at peace. Let me tell you that. That is more manlier that is a stronger sense of, of being. But that side of that, that wolf is inside of me, right? So when it's something like that, a dude writes me up like that, a manager writes me up for something I didn't clearly do to try to save their own skin and get a promotion, that fucking other wolf got fed, 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 fed for 16 fucking years. Before I went to Iraq, I was a class clown in school, elementary, junior high, high school. I was a kid, 15, 16, 17 years old. The class clown, man. I used to make people laugh a lot. Then I went to Iraq, came back, lost my sense of humor, changed me as a person. Then I joined the California Department of Correction. I told you, day one, I've identified that my post-traumatic stress disorder Not only started on day one of California Department of Corrections, but it had continued, right? And I told, I'm going to say it right now. You did not have to experience violence to have post-traumatic stress disorder. Being in a toxic ass work environment, anything that's traumatic, anything that goes against what you were taught, that, that goes deeper. That's a moral injury, right? A moral injury is something that cuts even deeper than PTSD, now I'm now I'm dropping real knowledge on you guys. And I learned through about moral injuries through the freaking therapy that I took. I lost my sense of humor in the department. Yeah, I would crack jokes, the wrong type of jokes. Just like when I was drinking alcohol. I was a funny guy, right? But somebody was always the butt of my jokes. Let me tell you that much. Somebody didn't appreciate it. Six months into this journey, I have, I have, 
I have regained the person I was prior to my 20 years of being in the suck, being in the trenches. Man, yesterday, my daughter and I, we went to Sesame Place. She sticks to me like gum now, hugging me, holding my hand. We even have this thing now where I started, I say, baby, when I squeeze your hand three times, that means I love you, right? And that came on because the other night, me and my daughter were talking, I guess a little bit too long while my wife was trying to sleep and she started yelling for us to be quiet (laughs) or basically to shut up, right? (laughs) <laughs> so I whispered in my daughter's ear, I said, uh, baby, when I squeeze your hand three times, that means I love you. Well, she, man, you better believe she was grabbing and squeezing my hand back. That's what I'm talking about, man. You know, I'm not telling people they have to quit their jobs, they have to quit their careers. They, if you're an inmate, you cannot, you cannot leave prison, right? You cannot open that gate and walk out. That's a fucked up feeling, right? I spent a week in jail. I know what it's like not to walk out an open door. If fuck, or not even open, or open or close, can't, you can't leave. But the healing process can start now. In whatever freaking situation, anyone. And there's people that don't even work in a prison, been to a prison, that watch this channel, that support me. This message is to the warriors, right? I didn't say call it the fucking prison warriors. <laughs> prison warriors. Cell warriors. You know what a cell warrior is, So you guys, in case you guys didn't know? A cell warrior is an inmate that's in there talking behind the cell door, talking smack, challenging you to fight. <laughs> the second the door's open, uh, they, uh... They don't, they don't, <laughs> they're a different person, right? That's a cell warrior. I just thought of that. So, I'm back, man. I'm back. Happy, right? I've recently recovered financially. Recovered financially, meaning I had to make a lot of sacrifices when I left the prison. One of the fucked up things that I had to do was cancel my daughter's yoga to make ends meet because of the big hit that the finances took. I had to explain to my daughter, hey, this real quick, like, you're going to get it back, but just, you know, daddy had to do some things. Look, at least I don't work right there. She was so happy. She she. She was hurt, but she was happy. She, I could see it on her face. She's four years old, about to be five, but she's smart. And that sucked, man, to have to cancel my daughter's yoga. It's like, fuck, man. But I did it for a greater cause, right? A sacrifice. Coming back from Iraq, I didn't want to seek treatment. I didn't want to look like a bitch, a coward, a weak individual, a broken person. But I had to sacrifice my ego, ego is not your amigo, and my pride in order to get better. That's a fucking sacrifice in itself. Right, I was raised a Mexican, hey, you're a machismo, you shut the fuck up and you deal with it. Same thing working in the prison. When I would come home and be like, fuck, this fucking job is fucking, my parents would pretty much be like, hey, shut the fuck up and deal with it. Right, well, I'm here to tell you, you don't have to fucking suck it up, right? It's not weak to ask for help. It's not weak to change your circumstances. As a matter of fact, that is the absolute strength. And I, I, I've, you've never heard me say this, but the most courageous, well, the people close to me have heard me, but the masses, the most courageous thing I ever did was ask for help. When it came to my alcoholism. In the emergency room. At the VA hospital in La Jolla. And that was the last time I ever drank. 12 years ago. (sighs) 
come Monday, Tuesday, I got to call the yoga place and and restart up my daughter's yoga, right? I told you I have financially recovered. And that is thanks to you guys. Thanks to you guys, right? That supported me. That was there to catch me when I fucking jumped. When I fell. I fell. Your boy fell out of the department, right? I was chasing a dollar. I was chasing the dollar. There's other ways to make money, guys. Right? And I'm not talking about in bad, criminal, corrupt ways. I'm talking about there's ways to make money anywhere, everywhere. This is 2023. If you've identified that whatever toxic ass environment, traumatic environment, whatever is in your life, a uh, toxic relationship, right? Verbal abuse, physical abuse. Change it. Change it. Start taking the steps to change it. All right. The message for today is the entire video is my life experience up until today. Everybody has a story. Everybody has an experience, right? Help others. Share your story to help others still going through the, the same struggles. Keep pushing forward.